So I'm going to end this off with the Donald Valdez uh, letter to the editor over the days, June 11th, 2020, in the Costilla County Free Press. So Donald Valdez is the current state representative, and he's running against uh, Martinez, a guy named Martinez. So it's every two years, right, so these things pop up every, every two years. Matthew Martinez versus Donald E. Valdez. State Representative District 62. So there's 64 counties, right? 62 districts? Anyways, I'm going to read Donald Valdez's letter. It's a little, um, you know, I'm reading a letter. So I'll read that at the end. First, I want to talk about Romanoff versus uh, Hinkenlooper. Do not vote, hey, Colorado, do not vote for Hinkenlooper. Do not vote for Hinkenlooper. You have... Romanoff, Andrew Romanoff is a badass. He's an actual progressive. You need somebody that's going to stand on some issues. When it comes to Hinkenlooper, you know, he wants to pretend he's a moderate or, you know, a conservative right winger. What, what the, I don't know what the hell he's actually doing. But he isn't, you know, he stopped Bernie Sanders, so that should tell you a bunch. And he's not Mr. Razzle Dazzle. You don't know what he believes in, he's not consistent. And he runs to the right all the time at that debate. He just watched whatever Romanoff said and did and just went slightly to the right of it. I think he would actually reduce Social Security. But when they asked, you know, Andrew Romanoff, he said, I'm going to increase Social Security. So when they asked Hinkenlooper what he would do, he said he'd increase it, but cautiously. He needed to pause. And he was like, ah, uh, increase Social Security spending. Ah, uh, He's not in favor of social spending. We need a person that's in favor of social spending. Andrew Romanoff isn't just for Social Security, but he's also in favor of abolishing ICE, abolishing the Electoral College. He went to the George Floyd protest himself. Andrew Romanoff is a progressive on so many issues, especially compared to Hinkenlooper. It's not even a comparison. So he wants to redistribute the police funds to social services such as mental hospitals, kind of defund the police. He wants to demilitarize the police, increase Social Security spending. He's in favor of the popular vote for the U.S. president, which is why he wants to abolish the Electoral College, not reform, but abolish it and abolish ICE. Don't just reform ICE, abolish ICE, abolish the Electoral College, ban racial profile and require cops to intervene on other cops committing high atrocities and major crimes prevent abuse of warrants, universal Medicare for all, not just a public option, but a guaranteed right to health care for all of us U.S. Americans born on this here soil. So this is Andrew Romanoff, right? Colorado's Gorbachev. Re prevent the abuse of warrants. So not even like, you know, a Stalin or a authoritarian socialist progressive, but a person that's like a leftist libertarian. He's in his 40s. He's young. He's impressive. He's exciting. Hinkenlooper, the stinking pooper. He is boring and stupid. He's a douchebag. Yeah, he's polite and nice and what have you, but that's the motherfucker that's had privilege his whole goddamn life. That motherfucker couldn't, you know, fight his way out of a paper bag, and yet he's got, you know, money and power. That's incredible. You lived in, in poor areas. You lived in the streets. You lived in out in rural areas on a farm. You know that it's much tougher than that. So Andrew Romanoff speaks to me on many issues. On many, many issues, right? Not just abolishing ICE. Not just increasing Social Security spending. Not just preventing the abuse of warrants and getting cops to arrest other cops. But he's for universal Medicare for all. He's for the Green New Deal. He's for legalizing marijuana. And guess who's not for that Green New Deal? Hinkenlooper. Hinkenlooper doesn't even believe in legal... What kind of fucking representative of Colorado are you? He's going to become a senator, but decriminalize, not legalize? That's that. That's care. Andrew Romanoff wants a ban on extracting oil on public lands. That's all of our lands. We all should be making money off of that. Andrew Romanoff wants more affordable housing. Make sure the rich pay their fair share. Romanoff is for reparations. He wants to ban fracking. He's for carbon tax. Raise minimum wage. 
all those, um, not, you know, I'm lukewarm and kind of against some of those on... But uh, he's for the poor person. He's for the working class. He wants cheaper Internet for folks. He wants stronger unions. And his Green New Deal includes legalizing marijuana. When it comes to the Green New Deal, John Hinkenlooper said, Ah, it's too socialistic. John Hinkenlooper is not for any of those things. All those things I just mentioned. He wants to reform ICE, and he wants to keep the Electoral College, probably decrease Social Security spending. So every one of those things, Medicare for all, now he's Mr. Public Option guy. George Floyd protest, he didn't even know what happened to George Floyd, thought he got shot. So John Hinkenlooper is out of touch, he's not consistent, you don't know what he actually believes, he's not, you don't know what he believes. At least with Andrew Romanoff, we're going to send him to Washington and we know exactly what we're getting with Andrew Romanoff. With John Hinkenlooper, we don't know. He's got name recognition. He had to get on the ballot by signature. The Democratic Party establishment would not pick Hinkenlooper. He had to go around. He had to circumvent. But he got on the ballot. Amy Klobacher is on Hinkenlooper's side. So when you got Klobacher and Stinkin' Pooper on one side, that should tell you all everything you need to know. Now, John Hinkenlooper says that he's not for legalizing marijuana, right? He's, he's going to get free naloxone for heroin addicts, right? Not that uh, other stuff. He's going to give him a different drug. Naloxone, I guess naloxone is good stuff. So he's going to go ahead and give drugs to heroin addicts, but when it comes to legalizing marijuana, shouldn't freedom be legal? Hey, John Hinkenlooper, what the fuck are you doing? How are you a Coloradan? How are you the governor during the legalization of marijuana? John Hinkenlooper's a fossil. He's a relic. He's just a petroglyph, an ancient artifact, a pointless one. At that, like a broken piece of pottery. Okay, John Hinkenlooper, you know, thanks for, you know, uh, raising your hand, but no thanks. You know, you got, you got us here, and we thank you for that. But you're not really just, you weren't out of touch now. You're out of touch then. You never were in touch. You just got lucky. So Romanoff, that's Andrew Romanoff is a progressive. All those issues, Andrew Romanoff is a progressive on. I should go ahead and, um, I should go ahead and read... Some of this, since that took longer, <laughs> I thought I was just going to rattle that out just real fast, you know. He's for ice and abolishing and this and... Anyways, okay, so after a 72-day recess due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we finally resumed the legislative session last Tuesday to finish the state budget and get our state on the road to recover. I know this has been a challenging time for all of us and that businesses and residents are suffering all over House District 62. The Joint Budget Committee has had to cut $3.3 billion from vital programs and institutions to balance the 2020-2021 budget. I want to take this time to outline some of my priorities. Moving forward, I'm 100% committed to the COVID-19 recovery in Southern Colorado. The San Luis Valley, particularly near Center, is experiencing a COVID-19 outbreak. We have to ensure that residents in that area have access to face coverings and are educated on how to properly use them as well as our practice in social, distan di in to social distancing, frequently wa hand washing. Okay, so these are, make sure they're washing their hands and social distancing. These are vital steps we can take to stop the outbreak of further spread in the San Luis Valley. Let's all make sure we are supporting our small businesses through the reopening process. I have met with small business owners, and yes, we continue the conversation within the community to get Feedback from small businesses on how we can better support them during these times. I am committed to economic development in our region. And this is an opportunity to truly focus on building a strong economy in southern Colorado. The murder of George Floyd at the hands of four Minneapolis police officers has invigorated the conversation about race in this country. Protests are taking place across the nation against police violence, but also against the systemic oppression that our communities of color particularly African Americans experience on a daily basis. I am a co-sponsor, along with my Democratic colleagues, on a bill introduced on Wednesday called the Law Enforcement Accountability and Integrity Act, SB 20-217. The bill requires all law enforcement to wear body cameras. Body cameras and that footage has, uh, from an incident has to be released within 14 days. It requires law enforcement agencies 
to track and report data on the use of police force and stops, including demographic data, eliminates the fleeing felon law, strengthens duty to intervene, and creates a system for state-level intervention to increase oversight. This bill is a step in the right direction to address police brutality and accountability, but the work will not be done. I applaud the good-hearted law enforcement officers in our community that put their lives on the line every day. We must continue to fight for equal access to education, economic opportunity, and health care for communities of color. I'm committed to fighting for the precious resources of Southern Colorado, which includes our water and natural environment. A topic that will be discussed in the interim is how to protect water in our rural communities across the state. Water is the lifeblood of our communities. We do not want to see rural Colorado suffer at the expense of a growing metro area. I know these are strange times, but in southern Colorado, we persevere, we innovate, and we move forward. I am inspired by how we have come together to help, help one another get through the past few months. We must continue to come together as a community and stand and support each other. I am always available to hear your questions and concerns, and it is truly an honor to serve you. Thank you. Colorado State Representative Donald Valdez. I like Donald Valdez. He's, you know, young and a lot of progressive liberal, you know, viewpoints. He's a cowboy, so I'm sure he's got a lot of conservative views, too. But Donald Valdez is a badass, and Martinez has to be a bigger progressive than Donald Valdez. I will say this. I mean, he writes a letter to the editor. Now, we need, you know, uh, every month and every week, we need to be updating what you're doing all the time, not just before Election Day. This is good, you know, uh, great publicity. This is going to go out to, you know, what, 1,000, 10,000 subscribers or what have you. So, fantastic publicity. Did he have to pay for it? So, free advertising. And he should give us a column like this every month. I want to hear from you, Donald Valdez, every month. I want to hear what you got going on. Who are you talking to? Who are you arguing with? Who is obstacles in the, what are you doing in the spirit? Of the movement? How are you getting us the water? What do you, you know, I need to know that. I need to know all that information. And so, it's, uh, you know, I like this letter. I like what he's talking about. He's saying, you know, we're, you know, cracking down and we're, you know, taking care of business with the whole outbreak. Then we're talking to small businesses, hanging out with small businesses. And then the big thing was the Police Reform Act. That is such a big fucking deal. He actually minimizes it in this paragraph, but he mentions it, right? He says, strengthens the duty to intervene. Meaning if you're a police officer and you're watching another police officer rob a bank and you don't intervene because it's thin blue line, well, you're just as bad as he is. You're a criminal piece of shit and neither one of you all should have a badge or a gun or state authority. No fucking what, you're robbing banks and what, robbing people and shit, just going around just robbing stage coaches and so, you know, that was a hypothetical, but uh, if they did that, I'm not for sure, what do you do? How do you stop them from doing that? Hope uh, another good cop comes around and arrests them? Thin blue line, right? They're all on the same side, no matter what crimes they commit. So, it's, you know, it, it kind of bothers me that Donald Valdez, at the very end, one week before, you know, two weeks, whatever, says, oh, we finally got something done. You're in there for two years. What have you been doing for two years? And your priorities for going forward, so you care about small business, and you, you know, the legislature passed that police accountability, so he was one of many that, you know, got in on that. But that's it. That's kind of, you know, we need this kind of letter every day. So I like this letter. I like Donald, I like what he's doing. I do resent a little bit that politicians only give a shit about us during election day. So it's very effective, right? He's going to get in this letter. A lot of people hear that he's actually doing stuff. Matthew Martinez, if he's a bigger progressive, I'll vote for Matthew Martinez. But that's, uh, yeah, so that's Donald Valdez. Um, the, uh, specifically, the, I want to end this off on the police, all the things that they're talking about. So you have police reform, major police reforms in Colorado. Cops get away with murder, and the main way that they get away with murder is they bury it in the grand jury. So they pretend, these prosecutors, the whole idea of a grand jury is it's an indictable jury, so they can indict you for a felony, but it's there to make sure that they're not just passing out frivolous felonies. So the idea of a grand jury is a good idea. 
You don't want just some corrupt asshole saying you're a felon and you're a felon and everybody's a felon. So a grand jury has to indict a person and then they actually have their trial. Once they're indicted, then they have a trial. So the brand new law, it does a bunch of things. It bans chokeholds, it bans shooting rubber bullets at the heads and genitals of protesters. It bans throwing out tear gas, you know, shooting tear gas at their heads and genitals and something else, their backs, right? Shit, cops like to sh they like shooting people in the back. In the Wild West, you didn't put up with that. Someone got shot in the back. That's how you know there was shenanigans. Somebody, you know, people d typically, I would say 90% of the time, you got shot in the back, there was, you know, that was bullshit. But the new law, he really undersells himself. He undercuts himself. Maybe he's trying to say, hey, I like the police, so he, you know, softened it a little bit. But this brand new law is huge. It ends qualified immunity. It makes sure that the grand juries, if they bury it, they, there has to be a report. Cop murders somebody. It goes to the grand jury, and the prosecutor and the grand jury bury it. Now the public and the media have to get a report about what the fuck happened. He killed somebody, and you don't think there's a dead body. Is there probable cause that a crime may have occurred? There's a dead body. Yes, there's probable cause. Indict the guy. Go through the criminal justice system. If this is a true blue justice system, then cops should be happy to go through the criminal justice. They should be excited to be able to tell their side, to tell the public what they did, how they, you know, stood for righteousness and goodness. Not that they're above the law, but they're amongst us, and they're with us, and they're such good people that their word alone in court is that strong. So grand juries have to give that report. They can't bury it no more. I think that's fantastic. Qualified immunity. Why should anybody get immunity? Qualified immunity means the cops can kill and rob and cheat and everything, and if they somehow say, well, it was in the line of duty, then they get away with anything and everything because of qualified immunity. The state's got uh, infinite, absolute, you know, total immunity. That's what the Supreme Court says. So, therefore, the cops have a kind of immunity, too, since they're the agents of the state. New law also says that all the police have to have body cameras and then that the unedited footage must be released to the public. This says 21 days. He said 14 days. So I guess I could read the law and see. This was 11th, and this was from a article in you know Google.com news. But not only has qualified immunity gone, not our body cameras, you know, going to be here on everybody. Not only are grand juries going to have to report why they covered up the crime of a murder, but you're also going to have uh, banning chokeholds. The police officers can be sued for misconduct up to $25,000. There's uses of force, prohibits police, uh, limits the use of force, prohibits police from using non-lethal weapons like tear gas and rubber bullets at the heads, pelvises, or backs of protesters or anybody. You can never shoot a person in the back, hardly ever. Requires officers to report every time they stop somebody they suspect of a crime to write that down that person's their name, their ethnicity, their race, their gender, their gathering statistics to see if there's disproportionate policing on the account of race, gender, or ethnicity. So they, let's see, they ban the police from using deadly force against sub uh, suspects that they believe are armed unless there's an imminent threat of a weapon being used as suspect attempts to escape which is kind of wild. You think the suspect may be armed, but he doesn't pull out the gun. He's running away. Now the police can't just shoot them. And that's, you know, that's if it's man-to-man, -man, that's, I think, okay, right? You don't know if they're, they got a gun or not. And once they pull their weapon, then, you know, that's they're pulling their... But if they don't pull the gun out and it's just hidden on their person, you can't assume that they got it and that they're going to use it if they're running. So that's... Yeah, hey, I'm not exactly excited about that, but that's part of it, too. Um, the bill asked cops to report the wrongdoing of others. So they asked, hey, cops, can you please intervene? <laughs> so that's the whole strengthens the duty to intervene. So they repeated it, right? Cops, 
It's not so much that I want cops to report the wrongdoing and get the cops in trouble. It's that I want the cops to actually be a force for good. I don't, the police have never done anything good for me. I want a crime-fighting organization. I want an organization that's around here that protects the security of the public and the peace of the public. I want some, an organization that actually cares about justice and righting the wrongs that happen to people. I don't want just a strong-ass leviathan that goes around cracking heads just whenever they come around town. I want them to actually be good and pay attention. I want them to be the ideal of Andy Griffith, right? He didn't even have a gun just by the, his own position and who he was. He was able to go around talking to people and resolving their issues. So, yeah, we're asking cops to, you know, so maybe that might help. Jared Polis says we could bend the moral arc of the universe towards justice. He also said that we cannot go back to normal. We need to create a new normal where everybody's rights are respected. So this, you know, is fantastic. This is, you know, some strong laws that cops have been using to get away with murder. And if we can't even agree that murder is wrong, then we don't have a basis for a civilization. So I feel like... Jared Polis in the state of Colorado just gave a brand new basis for civilization. No, you're not immune from your crimes. No, you can't murder, and the prosecutor isn't going to bury it in the grand jury, at least not without a report that's going to be given to the public. And, you know, they're, they're supposed to be private, so I don't know what that report is going to look like, but they got to say something in that report. That man murdered that man, and you're saying they don't even... I can walk across the street, and I have to go to trial for jaywalking if I say not guilty, but... It's, but it, he could kill a person. There's a dead body in the street, but he didn't even go to trial. He didn't even go, get a charge. He gets to walk home free. We just believe his word. That's good enough. Why do we have a criminal justice system? Why do we spend so much money on this damn system if we're not even going to use it? Because they know it's a rocket docket slaughterhouse. They know that people get fucked at the courthouse. And so if they get charged with a crime, they realize that it's going to be uphill battle and that it's, you know, the court in... Everybody's going to be against him. So, yeah, the officers who intentionally don't turn on or tamper with their camera can lose their certification for a year. Cops who don't follow the law can be fired. So they can be suspended for a year. Fired cops can also be personally liable up to $25,000 in damages if they violate, violate somebody's civil rights. And you can sue them, but it's capped at $25,000. This is a fantastic law. It is the beginning, but, you know, just ending qualified immunity, banning chokeholds, grand juries have to give reports now, body cameras on all of them, and then they got to release the unedited footage from the body cameras within 21. This is fantastic. This goes in the right direction. We do need police reform. Police do need to be held to account. They are our servants in a democracy. The government is supposed to be afraid of the people, but in a tyrannical dictatorship, the people are afraid of the government and their, you know, the king's men, their state's agents, the police. So the, in America, the people are afraid of the police. So this is tyranny. This is a dictatorship. We are allowed to vote still, right? So there's four branches of government. So just, you know, don't ever forget that. But this changes some things. So, you know, this is, I think this is overall headed in the right direction. So the bill says police should apply nonviolent means when possible, which is kind of weird. When it's possible, try nonviolence before going to, you know, violence. You should exhaust all nonviolent means, but then they carry on. So they say just cops, not jailers. So jailers don't have to worry about all that nonviolent, you know, bullshit. <laughs> uh, exhaust nonviolent means no. If you're a jailer, you can go straight to violence, no problem. That's totally fine. There's also, when it comes to exceptions, loopholes in the law, there's too many reasons that they could turn off their cameras. What should be held private? Anything and everything cops say and do should be recorded. You're, you got a uniform, you got a badge. At all times, even all duty cops can enforce the law if it's big enough. If they want to call their wives on their shift while they're in the cop car, while they're on duty, while they're getting paid by taxpayer money, and, you know, even though they're possibly talking to the whole world, who gives a shit? What does he got to hide? 
No, they need to have the cameras on 24-7, 365. And then, okay, that's too much. But at the very least, on their shifts, right, their eight-hour shift, the camera should be on the whole time. The whole time. Yeah, find a way to, you know, store all that data. Maybe after a week, you know, dump it all if there's nothing to keep, if there's no, you know. So officers can t also turn off their cameras to avoid recording personal information that's not case-related or if they're working undercover or if they're on an unrelated assignment. So, what, they're picking up donuts or something? I mean, this is, they can turn off the camera when there's a long break in the incident. So I guess they're trying to save, you know, data. They're trying to save the camera, and you don't, you know, record all of it any and all times. But that's the only way you can be guaranteed. The policy is you're a police officer, you're on duty, you're wearing a camera, and that camera is on. But they're saying when it comes to discussions and management, when it comes to tactical, administrative, and management discussions, when it comes to working undercover or on an unrelated assignment, some very vague language here for allowing police to turn off their cameras. So, yeah, they got body cameras and they got to give the unedited footage within three weeks. But, you know, uh, for the most part, they could turn off their cameras for a lot of reasons. So, that's, uh, you know, I got some caveats. It's not the best law, it's not the greatest law, but I think it's fantastic. I think it's exciting. Uh, these are interesting times that we're in, and they're using the George Floyd protest moment to, you know, move the conversation in the correct direction. So this is, uh, and once again, Colorado is, you know, uh, being a great leader for the nation, standing up for what is right, and uh, leading, you know, leading the conversation when it comes to the reforming of the police. Uh, I want to give some credit to Andrew Romanoff. I mentioned some of his ideas in the very beginning of this about why he wants to, uh, you know, to, uh, the, his ideas for police reform. But a lot of these ideas that got into this bill, Andrew Romanoff was pushing. And John Hinkenlooper and Romanoff both, you know, believed in reforming the police. But Andrew Romanoff, his, you know, a lot of his ideas uh, went directly into this bill. So don't ever underestimate the opposition or a campaign, a political campaign, uh, the ideas can become real. So, that's it. Peace!